So I will call to order the Transportation, Energy, and Utilities Committee meeting at 510. Um, and we'll go to a motion on the agenda first if the councilor wants to make the uh, the amended motion with the as I, I would make that motion, but I just want to make sure that Sandy Tebow um, knows that the uh, the item that is one that she's going to be there is uh, the third substantive one, and if she has a uh, a request, now would be the time to uh, to make it. Otherwise should hold her peace. Okay. Is Sandy with us on the call or? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, what what sort of the time frame approximately for the other couple items? Yeah, I would defer to maybe Director Spencer. Could you give an estimate on that? These first two substantive items really are, um, it depend on the commission's kind of engagement. My hope is that we get through the first two in 40 minutes. Can I jump back on in 40, about 35 minutes? Certainly. Yeah, yeah. you can leave, come back, no problem. Okay, I'd like to do yeah, that. Yeah, maybe just come back and come back in 35. You can see if we're, you know, if we're ready yet. And Great, thank yeah. you. We'll Thanks, do. Sandy. Okay, so. Uh, well, council the agenda. Do you want to make the motion? Yes, I, I move the agenda as presented. So with, with the um, deletion of number seven. I'll say that. Okay. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. We have our agenda unanimously. Um, I believe the next item would be the minute approving the minutes. Is that right? Yes. From our last meeting, can I hear a motion on that? I move to approve the minutes from our 426 meeting. Right, second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, we have our minutes. Um, and then that would move us into our public forum. So. If there's anyone who's here and wishes to speak, um, now's the time to do that. Um, you can speak on anything related to this committee. Uh, if, if you're gonna speak to an item on this agenda, we'll also give you the chance to speak during that time. So it's up to you. Um, but if anyone wants to speak now, please just indicate that, raise your hand or otherwise indicate that you wanna speak. And not seeing anyone is anyone else no, seeing no any one. indication there's no one online with a raised hand okay all right perfect then i will go ahead and close the public forum and we'll move into our first substantive item uh i'll turn it to director spencer to ts off for that thank you Great. Uh, we had uh, a number of questions from uh, some counselors and also from members of the public over the last two months around how we prioritized our sidewalk work. And uh, staff has been working uh, diligently over the last two years to kind of overhaul uh, our prioritization process. So we thought it was a good opportunity for us to be able to give you an overview and have you uh, weigh in with uh, any feedback that you have. Um, we do very much try to value uh, the public input we receive and balance that with, of course, the technical analysis that we're very excited to have just uh, done and completed uh, with our citywide sidewalk assessment. So with that, I think uh, it's Laura and Maddie with the presentation. Okay, I will share my screen. Maddie Sender, um, an Associate Public Works Engineer with the City of Burlington. Um, I will just give this presentation and Laura can add any input as she sees fit. Um, so we've already seen this slide at the Council and unfortunately the participants are covering the map. Here, I can take care of that. I think you can just 
Or I think you can even make it even. Yeah, I can. Okay. So this is the sidewalk work since 2017. Um, you can see 2020 and 21, there are a lot of little dots. This is when we really started to focus on short run work to address safety concerns that we saw and not just long block segments. Um, we've been doing the short runs with our DPW in-house crews, and then we have a contracted list that we put out to um, bid. So this slide shows the work that we have for this year. I've color coded this to show the major projects. We have the Mansfield Ave side path in red, the contracted work in blue, the DPW right away work or the short runs in green, the roundabout and university place. Um, you can see the contracted long run list here, which um, equates to about a mile of work. Um, SD Ireland will be the contractor doing that this year. So this is how, um, this was the sidewalk inventory that we have just completed this year. Um, it is a compilation of a barrier score and an activity score. So to go into the barrier score, um, it is just the raw condition of the sidewalk panel. Since we last did this effort in 2014, we adjusted the barrier score factors to better represent the deficiencies that we see in Burlington and get um, just a better picture of what deficiencies are present. So we included roughness and gapping. Gapping is that section between sidewalk panels where it sometimes starts to corrode from getting chipped by sidewalk plows or salt or whatever else it could be. And then roughness was essentially those sidewalk panels that we see that the entire surface of it just starts to degrade. We didn't have a great way of capturing that previously. Um, so that was one improvement from this inventory. So you can see in this map, it shows the highest priority barrier scores um, in yellow. Can I ask a, a question as whether? Yeah. Are there, there are any other characterizations of sidewalk conditions that are somehow outside of these? You know, you said how, you know, the gapping or the roughness was an area that you, you added. Mm -hmm. So clearly before there were conditions that you hadn't captured in the public, even though you might have been thinking about it, right? Yeah. So uh, it, are there still some issues with sidewalks that are being forced into these categories that, uh, you know, it's not great. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of them myself but I'm, I'm, because I'm reading yeah. this on the fly and so I'm not gonna get there. Um, we really found that the roughness and the gapping were the two things that we weren't capturing. I can't think of any others. The one that is hard to capture is the running slope because we have hills in Burlington, so. These are all based on ADA factors. Sure. So running slope is along this, like going, walking with the sidewalk. Yeah. Cross slope is the other way. So if it's going towards the curb or away, like you yeah. up from a house towards a curb or something. Um, just, yeah. to, just to quickly add to um, Councillor Bergman's question, a panel that might rock would be difficult to have captured in these categories, um, but it's something that we do know as a significant deficiency that we would work to replace right away. Um, the other one that gets measured in a different way is the material that the sidewalk is made up of. If it happens to be an asphalt section that we've quickly patched, um, that's recorded in a different way and not scored. Um, so those might be the only other really outstanding ones that we are aware of. Yeah. They're cat. Okay. Thank you, Laura. I know I like you for a lot of reasons, and that's one of them. Um, Details. Yeah, you know, it was always great to work with you. Um, so, uh, the, the materials, how does that get factored in here? I mean, we see that all the, all the time, right? We see the, uh, you know, a patch and then it decays and it's crumbled all around where you had patched it, mostly on, on roads, but sidewalks uh, sometimes too. 
like on the uh, uh, the, the handicap uh, tactile areas. That's an example. Yeah. So how how does that and the and the rocking um, get factored in? Um, so the rocking would uh, fall under the program's um, short runs, and that would get prioritized pretty high on the list. Uh, usually those are reported by C-Click Fixes or our own sidewalk um, tractors um, would send those in. They're, they're fairly rare. Usually a panel will crack in its entirety first, um, and then that gets measured under the scores that you see here. As it relates to the material that a sidewalk is made up, um, this inventory is entirely within GIS and Maddie has the ability to sort by that as a, as a criteria. Thank you. So, so moving forward, we just have a close up, realizing that that graphic is a bit hard to see um, of two sections of the city to kind of show where we have bad barrier sections remembering that yellow is where it is the highest percentage of barriers and this darker purpley blue is where it has the lowest percentage of barrier scores. Um, so um, this, this is pictures from the inventory. So one huge um, part of this inventory was they took pictures every 10 feet um, of every sidewalk panel in Burlington. So now we have a, a great snapshot of time um, and a great tool to kind of help that, whereas previously I would have to find time to go out and drive around the city and look at all these concerns. Now when somebody calls me, I can easily pull this up um, and it has been hugely helpful. Um, so these, this is how we've grouped the inventory um, into good, satisfactory, poor, and serious barrier scores. And just to correlate that with the, uh, the slide above, yeah. if you if you scan back up to that hard to read map, could you, yeah. you'll see on the right, it says barrier score. Yeah. There, do you, are you just linking like the 30 and the 35 together to be the, uh, the serious and then the 40 to the 40 half How is there a correlation between the, uh, so the characterizations and the numbers? The, this map is just pulling separate from that good, fair, serious board. Um, this is every, the actual score. So it's, this is more minute. We didn't aggregate this by just good serious failing or poor, what are uh, the four categories here? Four. Um, well. um, one, one question for those in the room, it looks like Jack Hansen fell back over into the attendees list. And I think only Maddie or the TV are hosts and could move him back. I can do that, but I'm gonna have to stop sharing. Thank you, Laura. Sorry. Um, also, while we're waiting for Maddie to bring her screen back up, Councilor Bergman, uh, there was a there was a slide in one of our previous presentations. I think maybe it was uh, an internal presentation that we did, but it's a it's a graph that shows where those barrier scores fall. And Maddie had kind of outlined where that serious good fair, poor um, categories landed. So you can kind of get a better tally as to how many miles uh, and what that distribution is uh, throughout the, the scoring. So we could make that available to you. That would be great. That's the correlation between the, the numbers that you come up with on the score factors and uh, the, these categories, the yep. aggregate. That would be helpful. Okay. Okay. So now uh, moving on to the equity and activity score. Um, so this is the other piece of this inventory that we looked to revamp and adjust to the city's current goals. Um, so you can see in red, this is everywhere where we added to this inventory. Um, so we pulled 
uh, high minority population, high low income, and high no household vehicles. Those are from census data. So we have the ability to update that as census data is released. Um, so we can keep that current. We also added a downtown district map to give the downtown core uh, score for pedestrian generators and then mobility challenges for age and narrow diverse populations. So the goal of this is to attach the usage to the sidewalk and kind of allow score or sidewalks to get boosted if they're being used a lot and based on the demographic of the users on that sidewalk. So this map again shows where the most activated areas of the city are in yellow, and then this dark purple um, shows the not so activated areas. So this is essentially the model for this whole inventory. Um, this is how we are actually processing this data to pull out a work plan. So this is an example of a long run, which would be an entire block of four sidewalk versus a short run where you can see there's three or four panels that are bad, but the sidewalk on either side is fine and we wouldn't need to replace that. So we've split this up into two categories, blocks and segments. And then within those, there's two groups each for a total of four groups. So first we have the long run list get created. So we have a goal of three miles of sidewalk each year. So this tool will spit out a work plan of approximately three miles. So the first long run list that it creates uses half a mile of just the worst barrier scores and doesn't factor in any activity or equity. So that's just making sure that we're getting the worst block of sidewalk regardless of where it is to make sure that we're addressing the true safety concerns. Then the next mile and a half um, uses the highest barrier score and the highest equity activity score. And this removes the bottom 50% of barrier scores. So that's the best 50% of sidewalks. So even if a sidewalk is right in the downtown core next to a bunch of pedestrian generators, if it's in good enough shape, we will never that will never jump the list just because it has a really high activity score. So it has to meet barrier score qualities first to have bad enough condition in the first place. Then the activity helps us kind of let some things jump the list if we know that they are getting activated a lot. So then that removes the worst mile and a half, or sorry, two miles of sidewalk that we can use for a contractor long run. And then you move on to short run sidewalks. So again, it goes into the worst barrier score short runs, half a mile, and then half a mile of the total score, which would be the worst barrier score and the highest activity score. So I don't know if you have any questions on that. That's kind of a lot, but um, I think the graphic here, if you really read through it, explains it quite well. Um, yeah, I, I think Maddie, um, let me just add for the kind of the Cliff's Notes summation. This type of scoring and raking and sorting is really important because as she mentioned, there are sidewalks in the downtown that are so highly activated that sometimes brand new sidewalks come to the top of our list because they have such a high activity score and so much use. And so we're trying to make sure with these equations and these sorting tools that those don't show up as work plans are part of our work plan. Additionally, we were in our last inventory missing the sidewalks that are further out in town that don't see a lot of pedestrian generators, but are in really poor condition. Um, and I, I want to go on record. We pulled these images from um, some of our previous inventory. I don't think that we have sidewalk anywhere in the city that looks like the image on the right here, but we did before the sustainable infrastructure program. Okay, so moving forward, this uh, is so I, I I've been yapping. So I, if you have any questions, I do. But I was going to wait. I just want to hear the presentation. I've been making questions. I could, would you rather have us bring questions out as you present, or would you rather we hold our questions to the end? I think it's fine if you want to ask questions now. I don't want to get lost and then keep going. Not. 
if there's questions that we can answer ahead of time, I think that's fine. Okay, so then I'll, I'll ask a couple then. Um, I'll just start at the beginning. So the barrier blocks that you presented in the, the first slide, the slides uh, three and four. Yeah. Um, so they're sort they're sort of larger areas. I you know when as I walk sidewalks, there's like there might be a nice stretch of sidewalk, and then there's a really uh, bad condition in a very short segment, maybe even a couple of blocks. It may be from heaving. It may be from where they sort of collapse, and there's puddling that happens there. And I sent you a picture of a sidewalk block um, around the corner from me that's been like that since 2001, because um, that's when I moved to the neighborhood. I first noticed it, and I've walked by it for years and years and years. And until we started this intensive sidewalk discussion, and you brought my sort of focus on the sidewalks, I haven't really considered it, but it's clearly in the serious category. Um, I just think that I, this is this is this scoring um is really you know essential to trying to to do the work of sidewalk replacement but there's there's this other aspect of sidewalk maintenance that i, I that i wanted to talk more about maybe we can as this presentation goes on and that's like if there are real bad spots and it may only be a block or two and how do we a sidewalk block yeah. and a four by four square that needs to be addressed and how, how we go about that so yeah so this absolutely. This graphic is just to give, like, just to aggregate all of this. Right. So this isn't, we have block by panel by panel, sidewalk panel by panel, and like data. So this is just an aggregated to the census block level. Okay. Just this is illustrative. Why don't you go to the short runs and long runs just to recap that uh, further? Yeah, right here. So okay. the, the short runs are 100 feet or less. So we are getting to those issues, those hot spots in group three and four. Okay. If we don't think we're getting to one that is urgent, then report that to us and we can confirm the model and the assessment is not that something hasn't substantively changed. And the, the, my other question was around the assessment. Um, and I, I think that it's we could and we should in, uh, uh, enlist the, the citizens. And I know that this is this is awesome. This this um, this slide right here, and I think that if people saw that, they could report things and do it in a way that was helpful to uh, getting the repairs uh, quantified in a in a in a way that you could score them. Um, so that so I think we need to enlist more people to look at the sidewalks that they know and walk every day to do this because I'm wondering about if the assessment. It gets things in aggregate, but if there are real hot spots that are problematic, either in the winter or, you know, because there's elderly folks that live there that have are people that are mobility challenged, we need to get fixed. And I think we can. I think you all are doing a, an awesome job at this, but I think that we can we can even get better at it. The other thing I, I just wanted to say really quickly was the the uh, how do you assess. Uh, how do you do the activity scores? How do you know how much a sidewalk is used? Is it just based on? So we use things such as like all of these listed here, transit stops, proximity to schools, parks, um, city attractions, pedestrian generators, senior centers, all of these things, we put them on a map and then um, did this all in GIS so we can pull like, okay, this is a radius around every school, a radius around every train, or well, we had to aggregate the transit stops a bit. So we worked with GMT to get the most used transit stops, um, but part, the same thing for parks, um, the downtown district, all the campuses, schools. So we had all of that in GIS and then put buffers around that so we can um, use that to see how many like what every sidewalk kind of overlapped a buffer of that generator, if that makes sense. Um, and then for the um, the final three, the things that we pulled from the census data that was given to us, you can get the census data um, by block groups. So that's a that's just the only way you can get that census data. So it's a bit of a bigger group. These are all in block groups here. Um, <coughs> But 
we have those in there as well. So every sidewalk within that block group got an extra score for whatever criteria they got for any of the census data. Okay, thank you. So that would be uh, slide eight, for example, I think you slide into the base, but you're gonna get there. And yeah. I love I you haven't gotten there, so I'm not gonna jump there yet. Um, are you done? I am. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so uh, the long run, you've got it broken. You've got a half mile and then one and a half miles. Now, is that just this year's, or is that sort of the um, the template, or 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 what? We've been aiming for three miles since the sustainable infrastructure so, fund. Okay, so there is the template and. Um, why those proportions? That was just um, kind of. Go ahead, go yeah, I can I can speak to that a little bit. So you know, our, our past approach had been the three miles, um, and after doing a few years of repairing long runs, for the most part, you know, we started to, and I would imagine our council base also started to hear a little bit, you know, more concerns about missing those short runs, uh, the one like the one that Councillor Barlow brought up. Ward 1-8 were very active in, in engaging us on this. Um, they had a lot of short runs that needed work. And so we recognize that, you know, our inventory has an eight-ish year lifespan and any sort of aggressive growing tree can actually push a panel to a point that it would fall into the serious category in that, in that time frame. So being able to have an output on an annual basis to identify where we should bring our short runs that is ranked and prioritized similar to our long runs is innovative um, for this, this type of work and output. Our previous inventory didn't spit out the short runs for us. It could only do the long runs. And so now we're getting a work plan for that work type, which is what our crews were doing anyway, um, that follows the, um, the process that we're using for the rest of the work. So I'm actually inclined to uh, look at uh, the short runs as being uh, a higher priority. Um, and I, it's not clear to me um, how long a long run is. Uh, I look up at the streets on the long run list and let's see, 1600, is that a quarter of a mile? 1600 About. feet? Or is that, no, is that a mile? That's not a mile. Like 5,000 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, feet. That's right. Yeah. So, so that's about a quarter of a mile. Um, so I, I, I yeah, I, I'm just well, maybe we of, can, uh, I'd like to table that question and, and sure. handle that one at the end with the bigger picture, but I'll write that one down. Uh, yeah, How did I mean, you wanna... just, to, just to be, just to, to finish that up, my, uh, my sense is that the uh, the short runs have a very high priority and this uh, on uh, slide seven seems not to be um, uh, showing that or not reflecting that. Um, and I'm not sure in terms of the equality of the short run Two groups between the um, the groups three and four as to whether they should be equal or whether we should be really trying to look at the um, the activity at, at a higher level where people are doing it, uh, knowing full well that you know we want to not let even the outliers uh, deteriorate to the point of uh, whatever the serious it, it gets serious is the uh, the worst. So. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to jump in. Maybe we can, I think it's, let's try to get through the rest of the presentation. If there's any just questions, clar clarifying questions, let's do those. But maybe the comments and the, and the bigger picture stuff, maybe let's save for the end. Because I want to I wanna also open, when we do finish the presentation, I want to give anyone from the public a chance to talk. But also, we do have a couple other large items. So. Sorry. Okay. 
So this goes through how this tool, like what this tool interface actually looks like. So it's a web-based tool. The first step is entering in the scoring, which we have come up with um, scores that some of them are the same, some of them we tweaked from the last inventory. Um, and for those that we added new criteria for. So we adjusted this a bit and we have the ability to adjust it um, in the future, but this is the plan for um, our template. And if we find this isn't working or as we use this tool, you know, five years from now, if we see that we need to adjust it a bit, we have that um, option. So then it spits out the priorities of all the long runs. Um, so again, yellow is the highest priority. And then as it gets to the darker purple blue, um, that is the lower priority long run. So this is the um, average score over that block. So every segment gets scored, that's aggregated into the average for that block. So this is still done on a panel by panel basis, and then that's just pulled together. And then we move to the short run list. So this is just 10 foot segments. So these are every dot is 10 feet, so two panels of sidewalk. Um, so as Laura mentioned, or I think Chapin mentioned, um, we can do up to 100 feet uh, for a short run. Um, and we have to factor in a few other things as we're doing short runs to make it um, feasible for our right away crews to be out there and mobilize. They have to do at least 50 feet. So even if there's two panels that are bad, we may have to find two panels on the other side of the street or you know down the block a little bit to make it worth their while to actually go there and mobilize. So that goes into the next step, which is staff review. Um, the QA, QC of the inventory, site visits, considering um, all the reports we get from residents, from calls, emails, um, walk-ins. Coordination is a big piece, um, private or city funded, since the short runs touch so much of the city and they're quickly, they come and go very quickly. It's the crews mobilize and are done within a week or two. Um, so there are a lot of moving pieces and a lot of private and city development going on that we need to work around. As well, and then the next step is just the logistics, the budget, construction, constructability, and efficiency. So efficiency is just what I was mentioning about the 50 feet um, needing to get through that buffer to make it economically feasible for us, as well as the budget, um, the amount of money that we're given for the year to be able to do the work. Um, so this is a picture of the work that is underway. Um, this is on Murray and Champlain Street. They're almost done here, um, and they have since moved to uh, right behind the city market downtown, um, doing two stretches there. These were all pulled from um, the short run inventory. Unfortunately, I didn't have any before pictures to show, but brand new sidewalk is better. So, and then the last piece of this tool is the new sidewalk. Um, so this is a prioritization of all of the sidewalks that are missing in the city. So if there's only sidewalk on one side of the street or if there's no sidewalk at all, um, we use the activity and equity score um, to help prioritize that as well as QA, QC. And um, we also consider if there is sidewalk on one side of the street. Um, versus none at all. Um, these are funded through state and federal grants. So we have um, a few past projects listed here and then some current ones. Um, the Lake Street shared use path is in design and the Intervale Road shared use path is also in design. Not for this year um, construction. So that is everything from the presentation. Laura, do you have any Comments to add? Yep. Um, just to add on to a few of the questions, um, one of the last slides that Maddie showed had the word constructability in there for our considerations that we do at a staff level. And what that speaks to is, um, you know, one of the streets that spit out this year was Poplar. Poplar has a four foot or less wide sidewalk that is composed of brick. Uh, 
another one that comes to the top of our list often is Sherman Street, which again is has some pretty significant ADA deficiencies. These are not candidates that fit inside of our maintenance budget estimate, which is where the request to the bond went. These require a little bit more engineering, potentially survey, uh, could be land rights, could be other more significant factors. And so this is where, um, you know, one of the requests that came from this uh, committee was, can we just spit out a list of all these sidewalks and let people know where they fall on the list? And these are the ones that have conditions that, you know, we know internally as staff, you know, they don't fit in the bucket of maintenance. They become a capital project. We have their condition, we have them uh, scored, but they need a little bit more and they need a different funding to help elevate them to what they're gonna need to become um, accessible and renewed. So that's where the word constructability speaks to. Um, Councilor Barlow asked about how does the public get involved? And that's a great question. Our previous inventory struggled to be forward facing out to the public to be able to provide something. And so I recognize that the block grouping of the maps for the barrier scores does combine a lot of detail that we can see as staff um, in what the inventory collected, but it's really difficult to put that back out forward facing. And so we're, we're trying a few templates. Our consultant um, is still working on helping us with that there are points where we do want feedback. Um, those boundaries around our activity scores, you know, are we capturing the right um, net as it relates to like a different schools for walkability? We've done what we know as staff uh, from working in the city over numerous years, um, but that's where we're gonna want some feedback. That's where we want our public to gut check this work so that it is working for them. So that is still in the mix um, before we really finalize this. And then lastly, to speak to uh, Council Bergman's long run question, um, you know, Maddie started to hint to it, but really it's about some efficiencies in the contracting of the work. I agree, I'd love to get to more areas of the city and do a little bit more work in more places, but there is, especially this season, there is a lot of efficiency in keeping a contractor on one site set up and doing a little bit more complete work um, than hitting the peaks of every worst pieces of sidewalk. I think that answers the questions I heard. Great, thank you. So I wanna give an opportunity for the public as well. Um, looks like there's just one person looking to speak, um, Cynthia Vermont, which I believe is Cindy Cook. Thanks for joining Cindy and the floor is yours. Um, uh, am I unmuted? This, this You're is good. We can hear you. Yeah. It's a different Zoom format than I'm used to. Um, yeah. So apologies. I've got a lot going on with family medical stuff, so I'm going to be disjointed, but I have a few things I want to comment on. First off is I would love for this process to be more transparent and clear in terms of how DPW is, is doing these rankings and where different uh, areas play out because we can't comment on things like uh, the activity equity score, unless we know what our score is vis-a-vis -vis others. Um, in my, I live on East Avenue. Uh, there are a number of uh, uh, residents that are just off of East Avenue that are very much affected by the East Avenue uh, arterial sidewalk. Um, there are several major parking areas for the U of M Medical Center. I don't know if those are included, but that, that leads to huge amounts of traffic on East Avenue. And um, again, I don't know how, how we used to have uh, relates to others in terms of scoring, uh, but I think that level of use ought to be really high in your ranking system because you wanna get the most uh, effect and, and uh, protect the most people with what you do. And I agree with Councillor Bergman that, um, that focusing on short runs, whereas it might not be quite as financially efficient will be more efficient in terms of public safety than doing long runs so you know um, the measure should i don't think should be on um, how many miles of sidewalk you do but on how much you uh how many hazards you reduce um the wards one and eight npa have been pushing on this this topic for a number of years now that we were really asking DPW to focus on the major trip and hazard areas, the major ice, uh, icing and ponding areas. 
uh, rather than doing runs so you can say we did so many miles. Um, let's focus on um, having the most public benefit, which means uh, focusing on the, the really, really gnarly areas. Um, so let's see. Uh, um, ponding and icing are huge on East Avenue and, and they are probably are in other areas. Um, we have segments that are two or three squares wide along that uh, pond and then ice to the point where my elderly neighbors in co-housing walk in the road rather than on the sidewalk because it's safer. And that's crazy. We really need to, to figure out how to address those kinds of issues so we don't we're wanting to encourage people to walk and uh, people can't walk on this major arterial sidewalk because of the, the icing and ponding. Um, so, but I, I come back to the um, transparency that we really, you've listed a bunch of factors, but it's, it's not clear how, how they relate and what it is you focus on most. And uh, my, my hope is that you focus on um, safety and, uh, and accessibility. Um, my neighbor can't uh, take her wheelchair on the sidewalk to my house because it's so, so bumpy. Um, that's, that's a problem. We, and it's, it's a liability issue for the city. Um, so I'd really um, ask that um, you let the public know how you're doing the scoring um, so, that, so that we can comment. And uh, related to that, the, the maps that you show are really difficult for uh, members of the public to uh, interpret. It'd be really nice to have some, some um, reference points so uh, we can tell where the, the segments are that you're looking at um, are in that very small map that you, you guys do. So those are my comments. I really appreciate that you're working hard on the sidewalks. It's, it's great. And I really ask that you focus on the areas that are of most significant public safety and are the most heavily used. And I think East Avenue uh, qualifies in both those regards and don't understand how uh, some, some smaller residential areas uh, rise to the top, whereas uh, major arterials don't. So that, those are my comments. Sorry for being so long-winded. Great. Thank you, Cindy. Um, so we are approaching an hour on this item. Um, do counselors, before I just dive into them, do counselors have other questions and comments that you wanted to share? You have something. Can I, can I, I, I do, yeah, but can I just hear a yes or no from each of you? Do you have more to ask or share? I have a, I have a short clarifying question. Okay, how about you, Councillor Brigman? Uh, I, I'm okay because I'm going to suggest that we continue to be talking about this in the future. So I don't okay. need to monopolize more. Okay. Okay. Um, Councillor Barlow, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, my question was around the 50 foot minimum for short run construction um, and how if you have a single panel or a couple of panels that need replacing, what's the proximate area that you would need to look at in order to make that 50 foot minimum viable? Could you, was it within a block or? I mean, it's hard in the new North End Ridge blocks that are super old, but um, within walking distance, okay. like a, it's enough that our crews could, you know, be efficiently doing work in two places, not that far away from each other, two or three places. So a okay. traditional block, not a new North End. That, that makes sense, but I think that seems to be, as you described it, one of the limiting factors for some of the more, um, you know, the, addressing some of the safety concerns on the really short runs where it may just be a block or two. So that, that helped me to understand more about how things are getting prioritized, so thank you. Um, if I can just add quickly to that, I don't think it's that we're skipping the really, really bad ones that rise to the top of the list. I think what is helpful to understand is that we are composing a work plan around that area that might pick ones that are in the poor category instead of the serious category. So there's still important sections to get to, but it's one of the reasons, and it's a question that's been asked previously, why won't we just eradicate the three miles of serious sidewalk that we presented to you tonight? And it's because we, 
of this composition of efficient work plans around some of the really serious areas, um, but, but we're taking work from the other category to make that a spot that we go to. Thank you, that's all I had. That's your answer. Okay, great, thanks. Um, yeah, I'll throw out maybe a couple of questions and if they don't have to necessarily be answered now, I'll let you decide, um, Laura and team, um, what you wanna answer now versus we can follow up by email or at the next meeting. Um, but I think it's, so yeah, a few questions sort of on the transparency and then a couple of bigger questions. So, and I think this gets at Cindy's point to some extent, is there a way to request what the score is for a given street? Um, I understand the challenges with distributing all the scores of all the streets. I, I think it makes sense that you all don't, don't do that. But um, if someone wanted to request a specific street, um, would you be able to share the score with them? Um, and, or I'll just throw out all my questions. Um, yeah, like, you know, these questions about East Ave or, or other streets that people have, is there a way to give them some sense of why that street didn't make it? I think one thing I'll throw out maybe as a suggestion it is in addition to showing all these criteria, is maybe showing a side by side of just picking two streets and saying, this one has this score, this one has that score here are the different factors, just to make it a little more real for people and so they can understand um, how it actually plays out in the real world a little bit better. Um, so to see kind of two side by side streets, maybe like the last one that made the cutoff and the first one that didn't make the cutoff, you know, some, something like that, that would be really telling and helpful for people to see how this works um, in the real world. And I think, my other question is, another question is how the foot traffic is calculated. Um, what, what method is used to calculate that? And then my big picture questions are just around process. If the council wanted to adjust these criteria, would, would that be through, um, not that I am intending to, but I'm just curious, would that be done through a resolution or what might that look like if we wanted to look at changing these? So those are my questions. I don't need answers now, but if you have, if you want to answer any of them now, or maybe we can follow up later on. I think if I can speak just quickly to kind of a few that might touch on it. Um, essentially, we were, we were getting ready to try to put a draft forward facing out on the web so that we could allow, um, you know, to be able to go back to Ward 1-8 who are very interested in helping us with this tool. Um, and anybody else who is just generally interested, again, you know, as I said before, it, it wasn't able to be forward facing before, but we are working on which parts we do want to be able to put out there so that we can get more of that feedback. Um, you had some great suggestions about like a comparison tool. Um, I think that it's possible to give out a score for an individual street, but it's only gonna be meaningful with that graph that I mentioned about Councilor Bergman so that you know where it falls in the whole world of the city. Um, but those are, are great things, you know, that. I don't see from our side because we have way too much data to look at, um, but how much is appropriate to show outwards. And as it relates to considering different criteria, um, I don't think it has to be as formal as a, a council action. You know, you guys are you guys are all counselors. We take feedback from everybody, from any member of our community. If there's something that we're doing wrong, we want to hear about that. Um, I don't think it has to be very formal. Our sidewalk program policy is only um, a policy or a guideline as it exists currently. So it is uh, it is easy enough to change. We do bring it forward and don't change it on the fly without uh, at least going through the DPW commission, so. Uh, but that document, which will explain a lot, which I think uh, Cindy spoke to, is also part of what will go up with the inventory. Great, okay. I think that, I think that answers everything. So no need to, no need to follow up, but if I have any others, I'll. I'll reach out. Um, yeah, and I guess, yeah, my only suggestion would just be giving an example, um, just one example and, and choosing, maybe choosing a street like East Ave where many people might think it, it was a no brainer, but just showing, okay, here's why it didn't make the cut. Because if you look at the average 
streets that made it in this was their score and this was east ab or whatever it may be just to kind of show how 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 this plays out and why it's not always as people might expect it to be um i think could be could be helpful um, counselor hansen if when yep. you were finished i, I would like... i'm all set go ahead um so i i think that we should can continue this conversation. And I'm just look, I've been just sort of browsing through DPW's uh, website and try to find, you know, like this isn't on there. Nobody, you know, can see it, at least that I can find in the, the really quick time that I did that. And so I'm wondering if, you know, knowing the, the full panoply of work you've got, so we're nothing we do now, or, you know, is going to change the work schedule that you've got. So we've got, there is some time. To work, but to to have a, a report back about transparency uh, and the improvements that are being made, the improvements that are being contemplated, um, maybe some examples that we can look at. Um, maybe it's just by going onto your website and going here. Um, this is where we can find the find the material. This is to make it easier. This is how you can compare sections this is where the matrices are laid out that kind of um work so that we can um give meaningful advice in terms of improving this um and give meaningful feedback in terms of whether the uh the priorities are being done in the way that at least the three counselors on this committee believe that they should be, or they should be adjusted. So, you know, just coming back to that with the, the standpoint of uh, the transparency um, review. Since you're talking about doing that anyway, it seems totally within the, the work that you're doing. And yep. Where to like be in August or September or something like that? Uh, that would, I think, uh, be fine. Even maybe even, even October. Um, is a uh, is a reasonable time frame for my standpoint. Yeah, let's let's aim for September. That way, if there are changes that you guys want, it's before we're developing our work plan for the next season. Okay, that sounds great. Um, so we can tentatively um, pencil in revisiting this at our September two meeting, um, and happy to talk continue the discussion offline as well. Um, Thank you. Yeah, thank you both so much um, for that. And thanks everyone for engaging. Um, we do have people waiting on other items, so I'm gonna keep us moving. So I will go ahead and close that item out and we'll go to the Queen City Park Road and Austin Drive scoping. I'll turn it over to Elizabeth. Um, thanks, Jack. Um, so. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Ross. I'm the transportation planner with City of Burlington Department of Public Works. I actually hopped on this project just in the last couple of weeks with Nicole Loesch's departure. Um, so hoping to see it through across the finish line, but due to the fact that I joined so late in the project, I'm actually gonna hand it off to Christine Ford at the CCRPC, which was um, you know, the actual leader of this project. So. Um, she, she will actually introduce us. Um, thank good. you, Elizabeth. Do, uh, do you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, my name is Christine Ford. I'm a transportation planner with Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission. Um, just to give you the background, this project was a joint application to CCRPC between Burlington and South Burlington. Um, it extends it along Queen City Park Road from Route 7 down around across the one lane bridge, um, continuing along Queen City Park Road, Austin Drive over to Oak Ledge Park. And um, it was funded with transportation planning dollars from CCRPC. And so we hired um, tool design to do this work. There was a, an advisory committee of representatives of citizens, as well as um, counselors from South Burlington and Burlington. We started around in the fall, in August, um, there was a public process, uh, a lengthy study, and we're just gonna go over this evening what, 
was recommended by the steering committee. We also had the walk bike um, committee in Burlington and the South Burlington Bike Ped Committee involved with the study. And we're gonna show you the alternative that those groups recommended. And if you are comfortable with it, you can endorse the preferred alternative and ask questions and whatever you desire. So I'm gonna introduce Lucy Gibson from Tool Design and she's just gonna go through a brief presentation giving you um, the background and outline of this study. So Lucy, you can go ahead. Yeah. Um, I have a PowerPoint set up. I will try to go through it really quickly and focus a little bit on the process and then recommendations at the end. So what I would say is interrupt me if you have a question that you wanna know more about, but just knowing you have a lot more beyond <laughs> this to talk about, um, I will, I'll try my best to move through quickly. And I've got the, There we go. All right, can folks see my screen here? Yes. So I will, um, again, like I said, go quickly. Here's the overview of the study area, which basically spans from South Burlington to Burlington. Here's Shelburne Road here, um, Home Avenue, Austin Drive, Queen City Park Road, making the big loop through here. And the general idea of the project is to connect the South Burlington Path Network, which is at the end, you can access at the end of Lindenwood Drive with the Burlington bike path up in the northwest corner here and also with Red Rocks Park. Um, the, uh, this is the team that guided the project. We had Christine coordinating both cities and then people from Burlington and South Burlington. And then we had a group of us from Tool Design Group and I have more than listed here, but we have a group of engineers, planners and landscape architects. Uh, helping with the project. We had an advisory committee. I won't read all the names, but it had people from both cities, from bicycle pedestrian groups, city councils, and other stakeholders and representatives of the area. And project goals, first of all, is just safe movement for people, but what traveling by all modes of travel through the study area. And then secondly, but equally, uh, to fill the gap in the regional bike network that would connect the paths in South Burlington with um, the paths in Burlington, particularly along the lake, but also the Champlain Parkway path, and also get access to Red Rocks Park. Uh, our process, we did a site analysis and observations and understood the conditions of the area. We had community feedback collected through an online map. I'll show the results of that in a minute. We developed alternatives and looked at the costs and benefits and impact. And then we have a final report, which I believe you have access to a copy, but um, it's a lengthy report in a big study area. So I'm not sure you have read it, but it, it um, you know, documents the process and recommends the alternative that we came up with. Here's a, some sampling comments from the interactive map we did. We got uh, lots of comments, hundreds um, from an, quite a few different people that, Key areas people really focused on were the intersection here at Shelburne Road, uh, the one lane bridge and the intersection of Home Avenue kind of rose to the top, but really there were a lot of comments and concerns throughout the study area, which were really helpful for us to understand as we developed our recommendations. Um, one of the goals that we wanna keep in mind is that we are looking at designing or accommodating bikes of all user profiles, not just the highly confident so really looking at some separation and low stress connections throughout the study area. This is a level of stress analysis of the existing conditions. And uh, we have, you know, the dark green are where we have shared use paths, a little piece of one here in South Burlington, the Champlain Parkway path, and then uh, the Burlington bike path. And then the sections along the street have varying levels of stress between two and three. Um, depending on traffic volume and uh, what kind of accommodations there are. And um, these are all the different types of bike facilities that are both in the area and that we looked at among the alternatives. And I'll skip over some of these. This study area is big and complex. So we broke it into five segments based on pieces that would be, could, could potentially be done independently and really had some unique conditions in each. So one through five, starting with one, over by Shelburne Road in South Burlington. Um, going through, starting again from South Burlington, currently there is a 
riders who don't want to ride on Shelburne Road ride on a sidewalk to get to the crossing to get to the um, get into Wards Burlington. And a, as I said, there's an existing shared use path, but very narrow, not in great condition. Our recommendations here is basically to widen the sidewalk along Route 7. And there is now a crosswalk on this side of the intersection, which just was done by VTrans this year, and then connect to the path, which would be widened and repaved. Um, and then this is just a, a view from the sidewalk level that actually the work can be done it appears within the state right of way, which is um, helpful. And then widening the path heading down the hill. So segment two is the park, first section of Queen City Park Road, which goes from the Hannaford's entrance to the crossing uh, where the Champlain Parkway path can be ac accessed right by Pine Street. Um, there's currently a sidewalk along the whole route, um, but there, this is the access to Champlain Parkway path. There is no crosswalk now, and I'm not sure any plans at this point for that to be included in the Champlain Parkway project. Um, we looked at the cross sections throughout the um, this section, existing conditions where sidewalk with about a 30 foot wide um, roadway and two options that we looked at again to get the low stress riding, which wouldn't really be achieved with just conventional bike lanes would be widening the sidewalk in towards the road with a to about 10 feet for shared use path. And there is room to do that resulting in 12 foot lanes on Queen City Park Road. Another option was to widen the road out on the other direction to provide two way separated bike lanes. And um, this you know, expands the footprint of the road basically. So here's some aerial views. We had um, CCRPC was able to do drone footage, but what it provides is an idea of the utilities and some of the other issues. And then the other option uh, widens throat to the north side. This is a view looking west towards the lake. Uh, here's the um, intersection of Pine Street, the Champlain Parkway, and then the idea is the path would stay on the south side of the road where it could be basically outside the utilities, but um, in the frontage of the Champlain Water District, and again, provide a crossing to the path. And then the other option that we looked at again was having bike lanes on the north side that would be able to access the path we'd still want a crosswalk for pedestrians walking on the sidewalk. So we looked, I won't go into detail, but we did look at the utility impacts and costs of each um, option for each segment. So I'll summarize that at the end. Um, moving down through segment three is a little more challenging where we have the sidewalk for part of it, but it ends and then there's the one lane bridge over the railroad. That was one of the top areas of comments. Um, just some aerial views. And then this is the study that was done for the bridge, I think about 10 years ago, possibly, that uh, proposed a two lane bridge to replace that bridge and sidewalk. Um, presumably whatever alternative that comes up with here because this has not been funded or designed yet could be kind of blended in with the bridge replacement. And then moving up to Central Avenue, this is a challenging, um, intersection, sorry about the quality of the photo, but right now there is um, two stop bars for Queen City Park Road, which is north is going to the right here and Queen City Park towards the industrial area is to the upper part of the screen. There's a gravel path that provides walking access to Central Avenue and um, two stop bars, but no stopping for the Queen City Park traffic. So basically the alternatives that we look at would be bring the shared use path here, you'd have protected crossings in each um, of each approach. And then at this point, we'd change the path to the north side of Queen City Park Road. And that's partly for both utilities and providing access to you know, the destinations on this side of the road. And that's the sidewalk option with bike lanes. And again, another um, cost analysis, so utility impacts are you know different for each option so and what we would the one lane bridge will probably be on a different project schedule than potentially a pathway but we could really start one and then get the other to fit in with what is done segment four is a segment that 
serves the industrial area and there's really no sidewalks at all except for a little um, piece of one at the Green Mountain Transit uh, facility in, shown in the blue dot here. There are advisory lanes throughout the section to provide some space for walking or biking. There are definitely concerns from the community that those are not really adequate to, for people to feel safe and comfortable, especially in winter where there's snow banks and, and the amount of heavy traffic, large, both a lot of bus traffic that uses this frequently from Green Mountain Transit and then trucks going to the industrial area. So I will um, skip over to this slide. This is one of the drone uh, photos which shows some of the issues in the area. This is looking north. Um, Burton's site is on the right here and then Rhino Foods and Green Mountain Transit and Edlin Company are on the left here. And there's utilities on the left side and there's also significant drainage swales on the left side that um, and the road is currently profiled to drain towards from east to west. So we really immediately recognized that doing anything on this side of this road was going to be really challenging and we really looked at having any sidewalks or shared use path on the east, east side on the Burton frontage. So basically the, um, and Burton is going through a process of looking at redeveloping their site and doing a lot more storm water drainage. So the alignment of a new path would be basically along the edge of the road, but it would fit in within the right of way and not conflict with their plans. This is just a view going further north. So here we're at the end of Queen City Park Road and Home Avenue and Austin Drive are up here. Um, so the path at this point could be more separated from the side of the road and Burton expressed their willingness to accommodate this. And it would just be nice to allow more space between, more of a buffer between biking and walking and the uh, traffic. And uh, these are what the cross sections look like. The existing is, um, varies in width, but an average typical of 25 feet. So the one option would be to provide a 10 to 12 foot shared use path on the, in the east side along the Burton frontage, or the other option would be to both build a sidewalk and then widen um, the street for bike lanes as well um, to provide separation between people walking and biking. And um, when we looked at the cost, the, um, Shared use path actually costs quite a bit less than doing the sidewalk plus the bike lane. So that's a consideration. And then finally, this last segment is uh, Austin Drive from the Home Avenue to Oak Ledge Park, which currently has conventional bike lanes, a sidewalk the whole way, and then becomes shared uh, bikes, sh bike sharing with traffic with on street parking. Um, once we round the corner at the Redstone condos. And I just wanna show this, this is a uh, excerpt from the Champlain Parkway plans. Um, this is what they have industrial parkway is now called Queen City Park Road, Home Avenue and Austin Drive here. And there will be a shared use path. It's either eight or 10 feet wide extending from the sh existing Champlain Parkway path up over to the Industrial Avenue. So that makes a nice connection for anything happening on either Queen City Park or Austin Drive. And then here's a view of Austin Drive. Again, we have utilities, we have an existing sidewalk. Um, the utilities tend to cross back and forth across the road, so they're not consistently on one side or the other. It does have a wider right of way, so we are able to contemplate, in this case, widening the sidewalk to a 10 foot shared use path without needing to go outside of the right of way. And for the most part, having a, having a path along here can avoid utility poles because of the extra room in the right of way. And then other options we looked at were widening the street on either side to provide fully separated bike lanes. And then here's a, one of the areas of a lot of concern was the Red Rocks condo entrance where traffic tends to move straight in and out from this intersection and not yield to uh, traffic staying on Austin Drive. And I think there's already planned somewhat afoot to tighten up the corner here. And then if this was converted to a widened to a bike path, ideally you'd wanna have a more gradual 
turn around the corner rather than a sharp turn at the sidewalk. And again, here are cross sections that we've been looking at to assess the impacts and costs. And the existing is the sidewalk with about 30 feet wide, which varies from having bike lanes or parking with two travel lanes. And the one option of widening to 10 feet shared use path uh, does fit in the right of way and it does allow the parking that currently exists to remain in place. The other option we looked at is keeping the sidewalk and widening the street to provide the separated bike lanes that would not allow parking to be preserved on that section of Austin Drive. So um, again, we looked at costs. So the, here's a summary of what the total cost for all five segments are. And basically the shared use path comes out to be overall lower cost, not necessarily in every segment, but um, overall it is. And the feeling of the committee, and as we looked at it, was that having a consistent shared use path throughout the project was going to be a preferable design to be welcoming to people and easy to navigate. And, and the amount of pedestrian traffic on the sidewalks currently doesn't lead to any concern about people biking and walking having to share at the facility. So that's where we ended up with the group. Um, I'd love your thoughts or questions on that now. Um, I think this just summarizes the points I made. The other consideration I didn't mention, but winter maintenance on a shared use path would generally be easier than maintaining both the sidewalk and then the separated bike lanes. And that includes both winter maintenance and an annual maintenance of replacing paint and flex posts and that kind of thing. Um, I won't read all of this, but we didn't prioritize the segment specifically, but we did in the report provide some discussion on things to consider with the prioritization. In general, the segment five along Austin was probably the lowest priority given the lower traffic and it has a nice sidewalk and um, it's a little easier for the wide range of riders to be riding on it today. But really there's you know, reasons for any of the other segments to kind of have an elevated priority. And then we did come up with a few short-term recommendations, which include, this is actually in South Burlington, but sort of tightening up the uh, intersection with the Hannaford's driveway that a lot of people found difficult to navigate. And then a few of the intersections we suggested considering uh, converting it to an all-way stop, like at Pine Street and Queen City Park Road and Central Avenue and Queen City Park Road that would make it a little safer and more easier for people to navigate. And so our next steps, we have a draft report out for a final review. Um, we'd certainly like your comments and any others that come in. And uh, it'll be presented to the city councils of both cities, I believe in June, they're scheduled. And um, the project is eligible now for funding through VTrans Gantz, and I believe the city of Burlington at least is considering um, a grant application. And that's all I have for slides. I'm happy to pull anything back up if people have questions or keep it open. If people have questions, I can jump back to anything. Great. Thank you so much. Um, counselors, any questions? Um, I have, uh, I have a, a couple. Go ahead. Um, so the first, I guess, is around the bridge. Is that part of the capital plan? Yes. I, okay. I, I'm still here. I could speak to that if you want yes. to. Yeah, go ahead, Laura. Um, so where it fits in the capital bond is that it's a bridge. Uh, if the expansion or replacement happens, we are looking for federal funding on it. Um, it's helpful. Thank you, Lucy, for bringing that back up. But the Burlington South Burlington line, um, is that blue line right there. And so it is entirely owned by the city of Burlington. We do have some repairs that need to happen this year that appeared in our um, capital plan, but the expansion we are pursuing federal funding for. Um, and my second question, thank you. And my second question is around the existing bike path um, that, that exists between Home Avenue and Big City Park Road that runs sort of parallel to will be the Champlain Parkway. Is the intention to keep that and maintain that? Yes, that has just been renovated as part of the Burlington Bike Path Rehabilitation and it uh, 
it, yes, the plan is to keep that uh, it is the component of the Champlain Parkway right of way facility. Um, and and in generally, my comments are I, I'm familiar with this area. I lived in the South End for a number of years. This was part of a, a running and cycling route that I use, and I'm aware of all of those sort of uh, uh, safety concerns around trying to navigate your way over the bridge, trying to get across at Red Rocks. Um, and trying to get across uh, Shelburne Road um, on the bike path. It's all very challenging. So this would definitely be a uh, much needed improvement. That's Great, all I have. thanks. Anything else, Councilor Bergman? Um, the, um, so South Burlington is working with us on this. Is there the, the thought of there being uh, shared applications for uh, the project this is looked at as sort of a single joint community project, even though it looks like most of the uh, the work, at least by mileage, is uh, in Burlington. Uh, talk to me about that. Um, yes. Laura, what a timely, uh, yeah, timely okay. conversation. What a timely conversation. Um, we are meeting with a, the city's newest grant director, um, Nicole Loesch. Uh, to review an application for section four of this project under the VTrans bike ped. Um, this year, I feel like uh, Nicole and Elizabeth had conversations with uh, CCRPC and with Lucy um, about being able to implement that section independent of South Burlington. Um, our understanding of South Burlington is they're just not ready uh, with a match this year or um, with capacity to submit an application. It is federal funding. Um, bike ped grants in the city of Burlington often do take longer than other municipalities. So even if they apply next year, the likelihood of construction on a very similar timeline is, uh, is a very real possibility. And I think the key piece is regional connections do score better than uh, within city connections. It working collaboratively with South Burlington, the RPC positions us well for grant funding, whether we apply together or apart. It, it seems to me that the, the most serious safety concerns are in South Burlington. And I have also run in my yeah. area and uh, it's a good thing I'm young and nimble. Is that this really connects with the larger system of itself Burlington? Yeah provides an opportunity if we solve some of these problems. <clears throat> this is Great. the last question I've got is just the relationship to the latest thinking on the Champlain Parkway. Uh, I mean, they, they look to me totally separate. Uh, uh, Pine Street is going to under the, the current thinking uh, dead end. Correct. Okay. And so the bike path that exists on the parkway that will be replaced that by this, this or that it will continue. It's in, it will continue. Thank you. I think yes. the thought is there'd be a continuous path still Correct. using that, but we still need, you know, access along Queen City Park. So they're serving two different purposes. Pine Street will be dead ended at the before the parkway right of way and that the shared use path would be accessible, continued to be ex accessed by Queen City Park Road. And so that third segment um, would be on one hand duplicative, but on another hand be very helpful in terms of that uh, Connection depending on yeah, it's going to serve more than South Burlington residents south of the number three there. And also any sort of Burton redevelopment. Great. Any other questions from counselors or comments? I have one other question, which is around what happens to the east. Once you get to Lindenwood, is, is there more of this plan that you're not sharing with us, that, or is this the entire plan? Is there a South Burlington component to improve um, the system once you get across Shelburne Road? 
There is nothing beyond this project is all encompassed by this area. So the path at the end of Lindenwood exists and it's, you know, kind of narrow. I don't know if they have long-term plans to widen it at all, but. Okay, thank you. But that is the connection to 12 or 14 miles of South Burlington Path Network. Right. So the key connection. Very much. Great. Great. So where are we in the process with this? I saw on, on our agenda that there was potentially an action on recommended at this point. Yeah, so we are, let me pull up my actual memo. Um, yes, the memo does include that language that we are requesting from the TUC this evening. Um, I don't know if you want me to read Could that. Could somebody um, point on the 34 page memo, the advisory committee's recommendation, the page that that is on, please. since you're, you're requesting that we endorse it. So the preferred alternative is on, find a page number here, um, document page 27 of the, of the report itself. And was the, was the advisory committee so, sorry for not knowing this already, but who was on the advisory committee and were they unanimous in, in this recommendation? Um, I know that, well, Lucy, I think you have the language that the committee all supported this recommendation. Yes, and I think they're, I'm just trying to bring up the, uh, the list of members, but everyone who was attending the last, meeting was uh, agreeable and unanimous on this. And I don't think we would have heard anything okay. else, but here's the list of people, so. Okay. Well, fundamentally, this is to endorse a continuous shared use path and improve crossings. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. And the, um, the memo, does provide sort of a summary of that as well um, at the top of the, the second page of the memo, separate from the report document itself. Um, that okay. has the summary of the, the what the what that alternative would actually look like. Yeah, and and how long did this advisory committee serve for? For over the course of a year. And there were four meetings, so a kind of kickoff and then at each other milestones. Okay, okay. That's and there helpful. are the minutes of the meetings in the report. And I think we didn't have the last meeting yet when we made the report, so we'll include that mm -hmm. in the final, final report. But. That's helpful. Okay, does anyone, I mean, I have some further comments, but does anyone want to make the motion and we can I give any- I make the motion uh, to accept the uh, scoping study to uh, endorse the recommendation of the advisory committee uh, for the uh, continuous shared use path and approved crossings and to recommend that the council do the same through a resolution. I'll second. Okay, motion's been made, seconded. Um, is there any discussion? Okay. I think it makes sense if there's money, or, you know, grant money to do this, it would be great. And I would love South Burlington to deal with that because that client is a mess. Mm -hmm. We will yeah. continue to advocate for that. South we'll Burlington. dump a lot of people out there on Selburn Road and uh, then critical mass will come with a thousand bicycles and all hell will break loose. South Burlington just had a leadership transition with their director uh, and the new director's getting their feet under them, but uh, we are in communication. Okay. Yeah, I mean, my, my preference is always to separate pedestrians and bicyclists, um, but I don't wanna, they've been working on this for a year and we're unanimous and I, and I heard 
in the presentation why that wasn't the case. Um, so I don't think I'm going to try to, you know, contest that at this stage in the process. Um, but just if anyone could reiterate, so it was basically the reason that it was shared use path over the separation was, was that primarily driven by the, the cost differential? I would and say that's simplicity. a big factor, but um, also that the, the potential for conflict was so low, where if we had a really busy sidewalk, you really come down differently. Yeah. Yeah, because the and cost of again the maintenance and other things too, which you know we again nothing was. I don't know if there's one thing that was fully deciding, but it seemed like mm -hmm. all of those considerations pointed that direction. And Lucy, didn't the report also say something about it was able to to provide a more continuous, like uninterrupted, right kind network. of experience oh. of that regional connection because we're connecting a path network to a path. So mm -hmm. that, yeah, whereas mm -hmm. like it's separated. Period might be more broken up a little right. bit choppier. Right, right. Yeah, the cost differential didn't seem didn't seem huge, but um, I think some of these other factors make sense and particularly just the fact that there's, yeah, there's not that many pedestrians on a lot of these segments. Um, there's also not a lot of uh, driveway crossings on the shared use path, and that's always a concern with shared use paths. Yeah. Sorry or a rural segment of the community. Just if I can add also the two-way facility required right-of-way through much of the length of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. Great, thanks for doing a bit of a recap on that. And are we all ready to vote on this? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 So that passes unanimously. Thanks everyone for the thorough presentation. We really appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Lucy and Christine. Yeah. Excellent. We will close that item and move into our next item, which is regarding uh, North Winooski Ave um, implementation and an update on that. Um, turn it over to Chapin and Elizabeth. Great. Uh, I think maybe before I jump in, if I could give a brief overview of what the department's been working on. I know Council Bergman has been in communication with Katma and others. So uh, what would be uh, the best use for the committee at this point? Um, yeah, Councilor Bergman, this I think you had requested this. Did you would you want to answer? Did you did you hear what um Shaping no, disaster. I, I, I'm very happy to give a report, and I actually will have a an action request at the end. But I, I don't care in terms of the order. And I've just uh, sent a tank. Oh, there's Sandy. Excellent. So, and would like for her to explain. So I'm not explaining for her what she's doing. Uh, so perhaps Chapin can um, give uh, his report. Uh, Sandy can uh, talk about uh, the conversations that we've had and what uh, they um, can and may be able to do and sort of uh, their um, their work to date. And then I can uh, give a report on uh, my outreach with uh, Will Clavel uh, to um, several uh, businesses on the uh, on the corridor and uh, also uh, my conversations with Go Vermont. And uh, then um, I would, I think, uh, be uh, in a position to, uh, have, you know, the after conversation to perhaps uh, put a, a motion on the table. Okay. Does that work? There was no action on the agenda and there's no associated, um, Happy material, so I'll be hearing this for the first time today. So I would be very happy if you could not to decide, could not decide okay, to okay. Uh, to get a sense okay. of, of things, um, you know, because I'm not clear in terms of sort of the process part of it has to do with the fifteen thousand okay. dollars, and I'm not and, and their actual. So I think that putting it out on the table uh, and then seeing what we need to to do is. Uh, uh, would be necessary and maybe sufficient for tonight. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm quite open. Thank you. 
Okay, great. Um, Director Spencer, do you want to start us off then? Yes, thank you, uh, Councillor Hanson. So uh, we have been, uh, Department of Public Works, we've been continuing to follow through with the direction that the council gave us, uh, which was uh, multifold in terms of follow up uh, for the implementation of the corridor study recommendation. Uh, just to recap uh, the promotion from the council. Uh, supported delaying the repaving of North Winooski Avenue until 2023 to give us time to do several things. Uh, one was to pursue off street parking opportunities. And the Department of Public Works has continued to work with a number of property owners uh, along the corridor for two types of parking. One would be parking off street for uh, employers and their employees. Uh, specifically the community health center, uh, their employees uh, use a large uh, component of the on-street parking system currently. And so we've been talking to adjacent property owners uh, with them. I've been in conversation with many of those adjacent property owners and the community health center uh, to seek parking uh, for business hours uh, during weekdays. In addition, there's been conversations with property owners about nighttime shared use parking, as in key sections of the corridor, there's more and more uh, evening use in the corridor. Uh, there are nighttime establishments and restaurants on the corridor, and uh, there are some parking lots, uh, particularly even having conversations with Vermont uh, Legal Aid, uh, with uh, Finn Sonnen uh, in the middle of the corridor about the potential of uh, evening and weekend parking for those types of uses. Uh, my team is meeting internally uh, and has reached out actually to CHCB to offer uh, conceptual design support for potential off-street parking options. Uh, this is not something we traditionally do, but given the kind of interest in us collectively finding uh, cooperative solutions to uh, the parking needs for the employees of Community Health Center, uh, we have reached out to Community Health Center with that offer. The second part uh, of the direction for council was to work on TDM. Uh, TDM takes transportation demand management, takes many forms. Uh, Public Works has been engaged in TDM activities for a long time. I serve on the GMT board. We were successful this year in raising the funds at the legislature to continue fare free transit. That's huge. Uh, in addition, you know, we, as the last two agenda items have discussed are bullish on building out the bike and pedestrian network for the city to kind of provide the facilities for those modes to increase. Uh, in addition, the, getting to the transportation management association work. I've been in touch with Sandy Tebow now twice about how we can partner and look at the council's commitment of $15,000 of transportation uh, demand management funding to best uh, work on the corridor. Uh, I've had conversations with Kavanaugh, I think Councilor Bergman has as well, we have some ideas about what's best uh, moving forward uh, and we look forward to partnering with them. Uh, I will say just uh, one additional piece uh, that we have reached out uh, to Burlington Housing Authority for a meeting with their new executive director. Uh, the mayor's office and I are uh, reaching out to schedule that meeting for early June. Uh, and, uh, you know, this complements meetings with Charlotte Boys and a number of other local partners uh, who could provide potentially off street parking for the health center. So I think that's a fair bit, and I'll pass it over to Council Perkman. So actually, Jim, if I could just jump in here and add a few more things. One is, city may know this, is Public Works participates in developer review. And one of those things, of course, is to advocate for TDM initiatives, bike parking, so on and so forth. So from a TDM perspective, we're, we're playing a significant role there uh, in the private sector beyond what we can influence within our own right away. The other piece of that puzzle is, um, Chief did mention this, is that we reached out to with zoning to find out what the possibility with 
would be to develop a parking lot or make use of the parking lot at Charlie Point site. What uh, Scott Gustin has shared with us is that it's an enterprise parcel or enterprise district. Yeah. And therefore, it uh, certainly can be accommodated in some form. So just a little add to what you would say. Great. Um, I would prefer that, um, I, I, would, I would defer actually, instead of prefer uh, to, um, to see what, whether Sandy would like me to go or you would like to, to go, Sandy. Um, at your choice. Yeah, I'm happy to to speak. I just had a few, you know, thoughts and comments I wanted to share with the group. So Sandy Tebow, Executive Director at CATMA, the Chittenden Area Transportation Management Association. Um, I've had conversations, as Chapin mentioned, with himself and Gene Bergman um, in regards to the opportunity to further educate businesses and constituents in this affected corridor and potential, you know, TDM measures that we could assist in um, implementing in this area. And I will just say anytime in the TDM world, anytime there's development occurring or corridor construction or parking changes, it's always a good opportunity to um, explore, you know, TDM measures. So such as the case here on North Winiski Avenue. So I think there's two ways CATMA could assist in engaging the employers um, in this area with TDM. Uh, CATMA has an employee transportation coordinator network, also known as the ETC network. Um, it is a free service that is supported by the Regional Planning Commission's annual work plan. Um, they've providing us support for eight years now on this ETC network. And this is a regional network. Um, we have uh, representation from businesses, developers, municipalities um, throughout Chittenden County. And we have about 90 members at this time. What that means is an employer designates a point person at the business to serve as the ETC. And they receive our quarterly newsletters that's filled with transportation information from bus schedule changes, uh, bike, bike infrastructure changes, uh, car share, bike share. Um, they also are invited to two events a year. We have hold one in the spring and one in the fall. Um, our, we have one coming up on June 8th at the BED Spark Space. And um, we have themed events. Uh, this particular one is focused around messaging. People are returning to the work site, gas prices are going up. It's a time to, you know, think about different messaging to our employees. So those ETCs, um, so these, the businesses in this corridor are welcome to join this network um, and join us. So that's one way um, that we could assist. Um, and Jean, I think was um, meeting with some of the businesses in this area to let them know about the ETC network. The second um, way we could assist is through CATMA membership. Uh, CATMA traditional membership has focused on employers, the major institutions, and we have a dozen or so uh, small, medium, and large businesses that we work with. And we administer and manage a comprehensive suite of TDM programs and services from incentives for biking and walking, uh, transit subsidy passes as needed, as interested, uh, trip planning support, uh, social media, workshops, events, etc. We also conduct surveys for our members um, in order to measure the uh, trends of sustainable travel behavior. Um, so not to get into all of the suite of programs and services, but um, we have not yet recruited uh, retail or restaurant or food establishments in our uh, membership. Um, like I said, we typically focus on employers. We have some commercial developers and residential developers. Um, I think the, you know, the majority of businesses in this corridor, from my understanding, um, aside from the community health center, are smaller employers from two, five, eight, or ten employees. 
Um, so I don't know that an individual CATMA membership makes sense uh, for the smaller employers in the area. And one thought I had uh, mentioned uh, to Jean and to Chapin at one point is the idea of a corridor TMA membership. It's not something we offer. It's not something we can, you know, we'd have to explore and research further, but um, you know, I'd be happy to look into that more if that was something that would be useful for the businesses in this area. Um, so with that said, though, I do want to mention that I have met with the Community Health Center a few years ago um, to, to discuss um, TDM at their workplace. We are, I am scheduled to meet with their team on June 6th. Uh, Community Health Center is a member of our ETC network. Um, and if Community Health Center was to join CATMA, um, one of the first steps we would do is conduct a worksite assessment, and then we would conduct an employee transportation survey. And this provides really good baseline data on uh, their employees' travel behavior, provides an educational opportunity for their employees, and, and we will would learn, you know, what their employees um, how their employees would like to travel to work, how they travel to work, what would encourage them to travel differently to work. So those would be a couple of the first um, steps that we would um, do if they were to join CATMA as a member. Um, so, and yeah, so there's one thought that came to mind when Chapin was talking was, um, you know, offering some kind of incentives for employees in that area. Um, maybe it's uh, incentives to support each other's biz local business. Um, for CATMA, we have a bike walk reward program where we provide our employees with rewards to City Market and Ski Rack and the movie theater downtown. Um, so something you know came you know might be worth thinking about you know how to incentivize employees and they can receive some um, you know reward card or certificate to support some of the local businesses. So those are just want to offer a couple of options that CATMA could assist with. Um, I think I'd be, I would definitely be interested in learning more about the businesses is the concern about the employee parking. You know, obviously these are food establishments needing parking for their customers. You know, are their customers more local where they are walking or busing there? Like I'd re really want to learn more about, you know, the dynamics in the area and what people are, are doing. Um, to provide some more and uh, to provide some more assistance. So thank you for your work and let me know how CATMA can assist with your project goals. And happy to answer Great. any questions or. Great, thank you. Um, Jean, did you wanna take the floor yeah. back? Or? Yeah, I, I, I would. Sandy, if you can just stay on, you know, on this, uh, that would be that would be great in this meeting. So, uh, you know, Sandy and I had a number of conversations, email and in, in person. Um, and we focused on the community health center because in terms of the uh, this corridor and in terms of particularly the north part of the corridor from um, Archibald to Riverside, this, this is the big nut to crack. So uh, I'm really happy that she's going to be meeting with, uh, with them and uh, they expressed to me and my, I, you know, I had like a two hour meeting with uh, the, the, the community health center. Um, and uh, they expressed um, a real interest in getting um, back into TDM. So this is an opportunity. They understand that they've got to do a lot of things. And um, one of the things that Sandy didn't mention tonight, but did mention, um, is to me is the um, whether there was a possibility of us uh, incentivizing or encouraging them to be part of that CATMA, this is the Community Health Center, uh, through a uh, subsidization of uh, part of their first year's membership, which I think is a totally, depending on the, the numbers, we've got $15,000 to, to do that. So Sandy, how much would um, a, an annual membership be? 
It's our, our employer memberships are based on the number of employees. And I believe I don't have their number off the top of my head, but I believe they might fall in the 50 to 150 employees. Maybe and if that was the case. And, that was and that's $2,500 a year. Okay. So, you know, I, I mean, I think that we might be talking about 12, you know, I, 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 I believe that people should be ponying up themselves, but 50% of a, a, a 1200 and you know, $50 um, contribution to that as an encouragement to, for them to get involved, I think is something that we should uh, consider. And the process for doing that is something to explore um, because the, in my mind, the, um, the employee survey as well as the workplace assessment is absolutely critical for them to be able to know how it is that they can make this adjustment to the, the differences in parking. So uh, I, I think it is critically important um, on that regard. And the other piece, and I know that Sandy, she, you just mentioned that, but you were uh, thinking about may, there may be the opportunity to do a study or a pilot program um, in the, the later summer or the, the mid to late summer or, or fall related to a, uh, a, a transportation management association for the quarter. And um, my conversations with the different employers, I, I spoke, I've spoken to like four or five em employers there uh, on, on the street. Um, there's an openness to that. So, you know, I mean, the devil's in the details. It was a very, very brief conversations, but they understand that individually they, you know, they're not in a position to do something, but that there's an interest that they all have, you know, together as businesses on this corridor. And this goes from Riverside to North. So um, I don't know, Sandy, uh, what you need to, um, to explore that more fully um, and, and what you need from us in particular, that would be, I think, helpful. Uh, because I do think that uh, the, um, the promotion of a TMA on that corridor um, has tremendous benefits, not just for transportation, but for the whole economic vitality and the community development of that area. It's something I've been trying to sell the uh, uh, business support people on because it's not just a transportation matter. So is there um, something that you can uh, add with that? Sure. Uh, so Katma, we just um, hired a consultant, out-of-state consultant, Steer Consulting, to uh, evaluate our current membership structure and our, and our package of TDM services. And we are expecting that project to be completed in October. Um, and so my plan is to, um, is to bring this up to our consultant as they're evaluating the, the structure on the, and explore the potential for a, this type of corridor TMA membership um, and, and nationally see if there's other TMAs that provide a similar structure and services. Another thing I wanted to just mention is as a CAPMA member, um, employees at Community Health Center um, specifically would be eligible for a discount on our Green Ride Bike Share annual membership. And currently, the system is in process of being expanded throughout Burlington and some neighborhoods. And um, the community health center area is one of the uh, potential hub expansions. And so their employees would be eligible for a 30% discount as a CAPMA member. Great. Another reason for us to, uh, to help get them into that system. Um, so it, it, I've, I've also, like I said, talked to um, a community health center, and I just want to share that uh, an email that I got um, from uh, Kim Anderson at the health center, who said that she wanted to let us let me know that their executive director spoken with Queen City Steel about the possibility of using the property directly behind their building uh, for a potential lot construction, and 
their architects are going to be exploring what can be managed on that slope. Now, I've also spoken with uh, Brian Pine um, who, at the CBDG conversation and a, uh, a hard a construction project is something that is CBDG eligible and it fits within the criteria of the program in many, many ways. So I think that there is a, there is there are funds to be able to do this if we play it right. And we've got some time to do that. And, and mobility and economic vitality, it all fits within that. So I would just say that within the context of your conversations, Chapin, um, to you know, it, it, yeah. those synergies are something that uh, we should uh, we should try to uh, uh, to bank, so to speak. Um, did Brian say how much CBDG money there was? They are generally in the you know, twenties. They were like they're, they're fifty hundred thousand dollars. I mean, they, some significant. There is a significant amount of change that's, that's on there. So I think that you know, again, that's something for us to to move on and. Presentation to the council recently. Yes, and, that, and this was as so I went out at that conference, you know, after that and, and talked to him about, you know, the ability to pony up something of this uh, for this corridor and for this project. Could we do that? Um, and the, the 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 relationship with that lot to other TM uh, TDM materials. I mean, Sandy talked about this with me. There is a potential disincentive that they would have if they build this lot to, well, like why do i have to do all this transportation demand management right people are like that but so i, I think it is really important for us to understand that the long-term benefit to the environment to the city to residents is to try to get away from the dependency on the single occupancy vehicle and to make this transportation change and therefore you know, we don't want to just say, okay, we'll build this lot and then we don't have to worry about it. So that, that is my hope that we're working on all these pieces together. And the reason that the, the, the corridor management association is really important is that I'm going to start, I'm going to segue to Fo Hong, who was one of the first um, businesses that I, we spent a, a lot of time and they have got some very unique employee problems. They've got customer problems, but they also have some very unique employee. Uh, and I don't know that they're different than a lot of people because their employees are coming. There are maybe six or seven or eight of them. So they're not a lot of them, like Sandy was saying, but they're coming from all over the joint, right? And their hours are really weird, you know, coming in at one o'clock, leaving at, a, you know, between 10 and one. Right, so like you know, like car pooling or van sharing or ride home, that doesn't really work so good. So one of the things, Chapin, that in terms of your conversations with DHA, would I and I raised this with Fo Hung, and they were like, hmm, could that happen? Is maybe something for their employees? They don't need a lot of spots there, but that would really be very important, and the. The, the pressure that is going to be on the shared lot of Old Spokes, uh, Good News Garage, and now Fo Hong is going to be incredible. And the ability to do parking enforcement is a factor which I think that we should start to build into our thinking. But if we could get Fo Hong's employees very close by, but off-site, that would be pretty cool. And there are at, there are about five spots that are at the BHA uh, facility there that would, I think, be sort of prime for that. So you might want to build that into the to the thinking. Um, there are, with they and the uh, African market and junk heats, uh, I think that short-term parking, the management plan, talks a lot about uh, short-term parking and um, the idea of 15 and 30 minute and 45 minute 
spots is uh, very important for us to build in to uh, to this. Um, you've got people who are picking up, people who are in shopping for about an hour. For example, uh, the African market. People were at about the 35 to 40, 30 to 45 minute shopping need there. They're coming from all over the place. Uh, so a 45 minute spot is not um, an unreasonable amount. And, and then crosswalks, because if we're, remove, if we're removing parking from the east side, junk heats and um, who should we call it? And uh, the African market are on the side that they're, they're losing the parking. So somebody can't just pull up there and do that. So the relationship, and I don't know whether this is where the, um, where $15,000, you know, where this TDM, you know, whether maybe that's some of the money, you know, where some of the money could come from for like mid block crossing, but we, we, we've got to build that, that in, uh, to their work. Um, bike racks, uh, at Fohong, they have, they have like none there. So that would be kind of good loading zones on the stop uh, on, on maybe in the sidewalk, you know, doing a little bit of a pull in, um, if it was limited in time, I don't, yeah, I, it, I, I know the engineering issues there, you know, people do pull up on the sidewalk. Saw my hairy eyeball. I did. <laughs> people do pull up on the sidewalk with their trucks. I, I, I've I, seen that on occasion. No. Maybe we can, you know, so the question is just, I, I you know, I, in terms of this work, that's the kind of thing that, and, you know, that is in DPW's Ballywick. But it, it, these are things that were raised in my conversations with them um, on the street, and they were like significant conversations that I could share. So when you say that, Gene, is enough space to kind of squeeze over and create like a turnout and maintain a sidewalk or not? I think that in the old um, the Salvation Army, there is sort of like this drive. There's an area that I think you could probably pull off the yeah, not a turn around. I don't want to get you. Yeah, yeah, keep going. Sorry. Yeah, no. I, I mean, I think that, and I'd be very happy to go out there on the street with an engine, you know, with engineers and, and, and sort of look at this and introduce us to these people because the other thing uh, is the connections. They need to know that. Um, and one last idea that came out of these conversations uh, that I had with them and the uh, Go Vermont. Uh, was the idea of uh, shopping carts. There are these hand uh, uh, trolleys, you know, it's just it's, a lot of people put their laundry in it. And Go Vermont has got a program. They're trying to encourage that. They've got a pilot project up in Franklin County uh, in, a, in a food desert. People got to walk to a, a long way to get their food and that seeming to work. And the African market, uh, would be interested in that. It's not a giveaway from uh, Go Vermont, so that may be an area that we would use some money for uh, from the 15,000 uh, as a pilot project to see how that could work. So this motion that I want us to consider, and I will have us think about it because I don't know that we need to do this right now, but is basically to provide a percentage, I'll throw out 50% of one year CAPMA membership for a uh, community health center as an incentive that we put in money for the shopping trolleys, I would say 10, that would be cited at the African market. Um, and then, and this is something that does not require money. I would like us to um, hold a community meeting to give people a status update. And I think that there actually should be two meetings, one on the north of Archibald and one the south to Union, because people don't know what's happening. And that is the worst thing for us collectively. And so that would mean a meeting to give a status of the, of the project, to talk about the resources that would be available, 
uh, or the resources that may be able, if there was interest in it, that we could explore, uh, that we would encourage people to talk about their needs, but in a way that was actually solution based instead of complaint based. In other words, not I just need parking, but you know, like what about if we had parking, you know, 15 or 30 minutes here? What about the crosswalks here? How would that all work? You know, so we, we get focused on solutions. Um, I would like us to uh, work, and I don't think that it's ready yet, but uh, for uh, if Sandy were to need some monies for a quarter uh, TMA uh, that we would contribute from this pot, and it wouldn't be a lot, but there, there would be something there because I really think that the employee um, surveys is really important. Um, and um, I think actually the last thing with that meeting is that this is probably a really good site to test the sidewalk maintenance, the sidewalk matrix and see just what people actually think about it or some way to use it, not one of these meetings then the fact that we're gonna have conversations about this fundamental transformation of the street uh, and start to look at the sidewalks because the transportation mobility on it here has the, 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 the top uh, improvement that people in the old North End want is better sidewalks. Um, and so here is an opportunity at a very basic level. And that's what we heard at the, you were at the committees, you know, like you're not helping us, you know, we need better sidewalks, we need better buses. So this might be a really good um, place and the com community meeting process might be a really good way to test some of those transparency um, concerns that we had on the sidewalk matrix. And I've sort of actually framed up a, a request that Mark has said, let's chew on it. So I'm okay with doing that um, for the next month and what you would need from me in terms of documents that I can get to make this easier to make a decision would be um, greatly appreciated. So, because I'll get that, but you know, fundamentally the components are to hold meetings, pony up some money, uh, and engage uh, people on some of these other basics um, out on the street themselves. And uh, great. Thank you, Councillor Bergman. So you're not making a motion, right? I am just... making a motion. I'm asking that we deal with it next at the next meeting, that we defer action on this until the next meeting, and that uh, we um, uh, we have the opportunity. You have the opportunity to ask for some details and some documents, if any, if I mean, which I'd have to create, but that's okay. Or um, uh, I think what I'm hearing from you is not so much that there's a formal motion on a table, but you've put concepts forward that you want to work with staff over the coming month to bring a written motion to the next meeting for a vote. Is that right? I, I, I can go with that if the staff is, is interested in, in, in taking me uh, on this, uh, walking yeah. on this journey with me. Absolutely. Surely. All right. Go ahead. Um, so I'm supportive of, of this. I just think that it needs a little bit more formulation. Um, I like the idea of trying to incentivize uh, businesses along the corridor um, and assist them in CAPA um, subscriptions. Um, one of the things I guess I have questions about is I know uh, Will Clavel is also working on this. Um, and he, he is a person who introduced me, all these meetings with them, right. was with Will. And he's meeting with the various businesses or in collaboration with you, meeting with these various businesses. And it sounds like you, said you had indicated you met with like four or five of them. You know, it'd be good to meet with all of them. So we understood the entire scope and then we could prioritize the disbursement or the best 
best use of the $15,000 for TDMA that's been appropriated um, from that, you know, from that, uh, the, the, the outcomes of those meetings. Because um, it seems like as you meet, you discover new opportunities like the carts with the African market. Yeah. So I would just like to maybe flesh this out a little bit more, but I am supportive. Yeah. That's this, this great. Um, one of the things that I hear from that and which I totally support is the integration of uh, all the staff who have an interest in this working together on that. And there has been a little bit of confusion uh, and, uh, regarding, at least when it has been articulated to me. So I would, there's a triangulation coming on because a lot of information is passing through you. I am working hard to talk to Kara and Will directly so that staff can communicate, collaborate, and we are definitely going to continue. This is good. So I'll be very happy to, uh, to have that because yeah. that's it's important. My, yeah, important. So, uh, great. Um, can I, are you, were you still going, um, no. Gina? Yeah, I, so I guess I'll comment now. I would say two, two main things I'd want to emphasize. One is, I think you said this, Gene, and I agree is that to, to build a new parking lot, I think would really undermine the goal of what we're trying to do here. And when we talk about demand management, we mean you know, reducing demand for parking, not, not increasing supply of parking. Um, and so I think we should really be focused in all these conversations. And as we do this work on reducing that parking demand, rather than trying to build more, build more parking. Um, so that's one thing I just want to voice. And the other thing I would say is in terms of, yeah, we've, we've set aside $15,000 to help to help businesses reduce parking demand and, and, and do TDM. And I think, I, I think I'm agreeing with, with Mark and Chapin to some extent is that, that that should be done through the process that I think is, is underway rather than by, by this committee sort of saying, okay, we're gonna give CHT this money to, to pay CATMA or we're gonna give African market. I think it should be, the businesses apply and it could be a very simple application it could be you know the amount of money what's your plan describe briefly your plan for reducing parking and, and you know how many employees do you have and how much you know just a, it could be a basic application and that way we could take that higher level view of okay here's what the different businesses are requesting and if businesses wanted to get together and do a joint application, say there was a handful that wanted to come to the city and say, we want $5,000 jointly to hire Katma to work with us jointly. I think that's, that's fine and they could do that. But I want to sort of leave it to the businesses to proactively tell us what they're going to do and why, why they, why we should give them money and how that money is going to go towards, you know, reducing the demand on, on parking by their employees. So my, my understanding was always that it would be done by application, but maybe I just invented that um, at some point, but that, that is my opinion is that it should be done by application. So um, if I, can, can I just sort of, yeah, it's not really a response. I, I mean, that, that sounds perfectly fine, but I can tell you that transportation is seen as something outside of the business um, responsibilities that they have. It's a very foreign thing. So they're being made to do this. And as a result, um, the amount of help that they need to get to that point of doing a, a, um, an application is going to be great. Um, I think as long as we are proactive in the assistance and the re outreach and we try to encourage them and we can bring in other resources, that it'll be effective. But without that, it, it's not going to happen. 
I, 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 I would bet anything on it. I am not a betting man. Um, it, it, so, um, but I, but I don't think that's in, but, it, but I don't think that an, an application process a, a, a way that we can set this up um, is, is inconsistent with that. And in fact, can encourage people to be thinking more clearly about it. So I, I absolutely um, can see how that could happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I hear that. I mean, I, I would say, though, I think a lot of these businesses do think a lot about transportation and, for example, have been very active throughout this Winooski Ave process advocating for you know, what they believe is going to serve them from a transportation perspective. And many of them have spent a lot of money, you know, building parking lots or setting up systems for employee parking. So I think some of them do think about it a lot and devote a lot of resources to it in terms of transportation. Others may not, which is the ones that really don't want to have this resource with CAPMA that they can if they don't want to think about it as much, they can essentially, you know, hire Katma to do a lot of that coordination for them. But I think it's, they may not um, think they're thinking about it, but I think most of them are thinking about it um, and devoting resources to it. This is just a shift in the way they, the, the way that they would need to think about it going forward, because the city is no longer going to be giving them the, the same level of um, parking that the city was essentially providing them before. Um, Sandy, were you gonna, I saw you come off mute. Were you gonna yeah, tell me? I was just gonna say that's exactly, uh, so two comments is, you know, asking a business, a small business with minimal resources to complete an application or to do any extra, you know, work with transportation. I know, you know, I think could be true. Um, the other, um, the other comment I had was um, the benefit of our ETC network and the the reason we created the ETC network was to engage more businesses on what is TDM, what is the value, what is the benefits, and to collaborate and network with others that are you know, having transportation challenges. So like, they don't feel like, oh, they're just targeting me, you know, or it's only us that deal with parking or transportation challenges. It's, it's a forum for people to talk about what their challenges are and maybe seek, you know, network and talk with others, like how they resolve those challenges, you know, whether it's joining Katma or some other solutions they did internally. So I think if we could, you know, encourage these businesses but again it's hard they're running a business they may not have time to leave from 11 30 to 1 twice a year you know um you know it'd be great if even if we could get a cut two or three of the businesses to come to our june 8th event um and just hear a little bit more about tdm and talk with other businesses because they're from all over you know the region so anyway i think it's like engaging them in that TDM conversation and really understanding and get them excited about seeking other types of solutions. Great. Thank you, Sandy. Um, any other comments on this before we move on? Okay. All right. Well, seeing none, we can kind of take this offline and continue this discussion. Um, and we will close that item out for tonight. And we'll go to our final deliberative item, the Champlain Parkway update. Take care, Sandy. Thanks so Thank much you. for making Thanks it. Thanks for having Thank me. You, um, yep. Bye -bye. So I'm going to turn it over to um, Norm, Corey, and, and John for, for this one. Great. I know Norm had to step out briefly, but we had heard from, I believe it was Councilor Bergman with a question from a constituent about whether the repayment provisions that uh, were seen to be rescinded as part of the Infrastructure and Jobs Act that the federal government passed, so it's applying to the Champlain Parkway. There has been a lot of discussion around the enormity of funds spent to date on this project and, uh, and the uh, repayment provisions in our cooperative agreement. So we wanted to have our legal team 
fully vet those out and provide you with a memo, as you'll see in your packet, that really clearly indicates the city's position on this. Uh, and I'll leave it to the project team to talk more. I suppose that's me. <laughs> yeah, so the, the analysis is in the memo, but the, uh, uh, you know, we just took a look at the rationale that federal highways are relying on for these repayment terms uh, and, you know, the impact on that under the Infrastructure Act like last fall. And it, there was one repayment provision eliminated, but not the one that federal highway is just relying on. So uh, I don't know if you want to look at more detail. You know. It was great. It was a great legal memo. I, I missed reading them and writing them. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. So, are there any questions after? I read the memo. It was clear to me. Okay, thank you. Sure, no problem. We probably should have. Great. Go. Check. Who was yeah. someone just trying to speak? Was that Corey here? No, I, I can't. Sorry, it's hard for me to tell who in the room is trying to speak. Um, you're all very small on my screen. <laughs> no problem. Um, we were yeah. just having a conversation and having a lawyer sit in the room for three hours probably wasn't the best organization of the agenda. And that's part yes. of my fault. So uh, thanks to John for being patient. But, uh, I, you know, uh, Councillor Hansen, do you have any questions about the memo or the, the conclusions in it? So the, bo the bottom line is nothing. Nothing has changed regarding the Champlain Parkway repayment right correct yeah. okay great um i do not and i also want to apologize that yeah we we should have we should have uh thought of this earlier of, of not um arranging the agenda in this in this way so i'm sorry for that as the chair for you all that you you had to sit through um and ultimately it was we didn't end up having a conversation on that i'm sorry about that no problem at all. I found it very interesting, and I was able to get some other work done. So it just wasn't all on the city's clock. All right, I'm glad. I'm glad you had your computer, and we're doing other work, and also, you know, got something out of the other discussions. So that is good to hear. And any other questions or thoughts on this before we kind of close things out? I mean, is there any um, reason to uh, just? publicize this knowing that uh, there are people that are, that are out there who are uh, saying that the laws changed and uh, you know this is a reason to, uh, to, to kill the project. Yeah. You know, there's, there's ongoing litigation. I'm always a little reluctant to put things out in, in, that, in those circumstances it's any wider than they need to be. Just, you know, anything can be said about what we do. Potentially can be misconstrued in litigation. So. Yeah. But uh, I, would, I would defer to Tennessee on that issue. Okay, I think you know the the reasonable approach would be if you were contacted by an individual with concern about this. This memo is a public document on the city's website. You could direct them to the memo. Okay. That would be, I think, the appropriate step. Okay, so we are allowed to share it if someone wants to see it. It's public, right. Yeah, it's public. Okay. I mean, I guess the question yeah. that Gene has expressed in the past is that you know, the the project website. Should this be posted as kind of a document referenced within that project website? I mean, it it it, it seems to be a, a straightforward legal it's publicly available argument. It's a publicly available. It would make sense to do that. The you know the the less very meaningless questions. The the more time we have to spend on the the important arguments. I see a problem posting it there, but yeah. Okay. I think you can forward it along to the folks yep. who express concern, and we will look at uh, posting it on the uh, project website. Yeah. All righty. Anything else on this? Hearing none, I will close that out. Thanks, everyone. And we will go to the director's report. The hour and the robust agenda. Um, I will leave it at that. <laughs> Happy to answer any questions on the counselor's updates. Okay. Any counselor updates or questions? You're in an upper room. All right. Hearing none, um, our next meeting is on the 28th. And if there's no objections, I will adjourn.
Thank you so much, yes, everyone. I have got a conflict on the 28th, um, which I will see if I can resolve, but I don't think I am going to be able to. But I may be out of town on the 28th. Okay. Uh, um, on a trip that I haven't planned and it isn't certain yet, but it's within that time frame to a town that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. <laughs> <yet. laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, why don't you all um, just confirm that on your end if there's no way around, or if you need, if you both can't be here, um, we'll we'll need to reschedule. So just uh, see if there's anything you can do, and if not, we'll, we'll, we can find a time. I'm pretty flexible on my end, and we'll have to work with staff to find a time. Right. Does that if, make uh, sense, or do folks want to try to? I'd suggest we consider the, the previous Tuesday, the 21st. So when you're looking at dates, if you can let us know about the 21st and 28th. The 21st is is wide open for me. I think it works for me as well. Me too. Me too. It would require us all to beat drums and celebrate the solstice together, but you know, I could do that. <laughs> I'll bring my signal. Wow. I can't wait for that. <laughs> if you want. So we already we already solved the scheduling problem. We're twenty first at five. Uh, we're going to take a look at the front conference room. And I think Maddie is on it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, so, let's all plan on that unless we hear otherwise. Okay. Okay. I love it. Great. Thank Great. you. Great. Uh, Thanks so much. Is booked. Is there, a, is there a first? We could do that Thursday or uh, that. So Thursday the 23rd or Monday the 20th, front conference room is open. I haven't, I'm not looking at you. Council's the 20th. I think, yeah, I think one option could be just finding a different location for the meeting. Uh, yeah, or going, vir or going virtual, potentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 21st we, is. We could do it maybe, is it? Are you able to see the schedule for the Busher conference room in City Hall or even just the main contours? I don't have that conference room. I can try and have Yeah, we'll take a look. It sounds like the okay. 21st is preferable to the 28th. The other thing is I just need to make sure that uh, of the items we have coming up that we'll be prepared a week early. But okay. I think we got a clear sense of what works better for you and we'll work to accommodate. Okay, that sounds good. Let us know. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Take care. Likewise. Yeah. We didn't get you. Bye. Oh, I think. Oh. Yeah, I think he did. Oh. I think uh, it was by consensus. Yeah. 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 All righty. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thank Bye, you. Jack. <laughs>